that all undergraduates and now graduates pay, graduate students pay. The fees go toward all kinds of pedagogical applications of technology. The student technology fee funds many projects throughout the college, including the IT Fellows Program. Uh, we have all kinds of different ways that that money gets used. Just really beneficial things like for everybody, like the kiosks in the hallways that allows students to get access to the internet. Well, as a typical student, you know, you don't really know much about where your fees go or what they do, so it's actually kind of interesting to actually make decisions on where those fees go. Any undergraduate or graduate student can get involved on that committee, even becoming co-chair, because, and we love it that they do. I've had a very good experience serving on the committee. It's really um, helped provide me with skills I might need in the future. And we welcome the students, and, and in, in years past we've had very vigorous, robust kinds of discussions that have allowed the students to have quite a bit of influence into what gets funded and what doesn't. Our department uh, has had um, a, a grad IT fellow and we had the first undergrad IT fellow and uh, they've um, been great in the department having somebody physically in the room or that you can walk across the hall and say could you come and look at this it's just that that personal relationship with somebody you, you you know you know what he knows and you know what he's um, what he's good at and, and he knows you. So it just makes con consulting really efficient because you come in and, and you don't have all that sort of spinning of wheels at the beginning where you figure out where everybody is. In using the SBRL, I've been extremely impressed with how um, well organized it is. You know, the questions that I'm asking are about variation in human behavior. So. For me, the tools that um, CLA OIT offers researchers are uniquely suited to the kinds of questions that I ask. Well, I think that one of the things that we kind of downplay sometimes is just how important social science research is. You know, if you look at the kinds of things that people talk about in the popular media, people go uh, all gaga when they see a study that shows a particular brain region lighting up in five subjects in a particular task. Um, and that's very important. I'm not downplaying the importance of that research, but it's just as important to be able to model and understand the um, behavior of large populations of people. So I, uh, I'm particularly impressed that CLA made an investment in the social sciences, and I hope that it's not just a fiscal investment in you know individual that, that helps individual researchers, but one that sort of furthers the cause of the social sciences more generally as as a crucial um, field of inquiry. Uh, the center I work for, the Flexible Work and Wellbeing Center, we partnered with DRCS to have them put a survey that we designed on the web. Our experience with DRCS was great. We, they took us through every step of the process. Basically all we had to do was hand them a paper copy of the survey and they disappeared with it and then a couple weeks later they came back and they showed us they showed us the first version on the on the web and then we just went back and forth with them about the edits until we got it to the place where we wanted. There's there's no way we could have done this without them, <laughs> basically. I mean not not only did we not have the capacity to do it, and so we had we had them do it for us. They did it great. I mean it looked it looked great, it worked perfectly and they saved us so much time. Everything was great about our experience with CLA. Um, in my teaching, I primarily use the digital content uh, library, um, partly because um, I used to teach mainly using uh, slides uh, as illustrative materials for my lectures on the development of cities in different parts of the world. And um, now I'm, of course, using PowerPoints uh, as we go away from slides and toward, uh, um, you know, PowerPoint presentations. Uh, it's a great resource, and the thing is that um, it's not only uh, getting your own material digitized, um, you know, my slides, for instance. Uh, it's also um, having a, a, a vast host of imagery available f uh, that other people have done. Um, so I'm sure other people are using the material that I've put into the DCL and I use the material that other people have uh, uh, used. They're, the DCL is really wonderful to work with. 
I teach in the television studios. My classes utilize all of the television production gear. They have a suite in Ford, they have a suite in Rarig. Um, they utilize the laptops that CLA TV has. I've taken advantage of quite a few services at uh, CLA OIT or video services. Um, when I was a freshman in college in 2006, I started taking courses in, in the studios and from there I um, took several more and I started working here. Um, the, we've got financial support, we've got temporal support in terms of giving us time and a facility to teach our classes and uh, the people that we work with are incredibly knowledgeable. They understand the technology, they also understand the needs that we have from an aesthetic sense. Uh, they're incredibly helpful. If an instructor has a desire to use any sort of digital media, I think one of the first stops, if not the first stop that they should use, would be with the digital media services people. Or whatever you guys are called. Do I need to retake that? Green screen? Well, it's pretty interesting, actually. You take a bright green curtain and you can put anything you want behind it, like a picture of fuzzy kittens or, you know, Minnesota marching band or whatever you want. and. Uh, it comes in pretty handy in the TV studio when you need to put somebody someplace. Mm -hmm.